have a few announcements to make before we get started. For our broadcast media, our satellite coordinates today, we're at Galaxy 17 Transponder 10, slot B, the downlink 11895.5 vertical. Please direct any questions, any issues you may have to the folks at Hammond Communications. I know we've made these announcements a few days. In case we have anyone new, please silence your cell phones. Also, we will bring a microphone to you. Raise your hand if you have a question. Please identify yourself by name and affiliation. I know it gets a little repetitive, but we are trying to uh, do our transcripts. And we need to know who is asking the questions. Uh, anyone that is on the Zoom, please use the raised hand function. We will get to you. We will take priority to questions inside the interview room. And as a reminder, the recording of the press conferences on your cell phones or cameras is not allowed. Uh, one other announcement, so we will have uh, the starting five for each team will be coming in along with the head coach. After the first 20 minutes, we will excuse the student athletes. So once the student athletes, so, so let's direct most of our questions, you can ask questions to coach as well, but we can direct most questions to the student athletes for the first 20 minutes, then they will be excused and the head coach will still be here for approximately 20 more minutes. We should get started shortly. Just find your name. Okay, we've got our starting five for Gonzaga here with no particular order here. Drew Timmy, Anton Watson, Julian Strother, Nolan Hickman, Rasir Bolton, and we're already tearing down the set. <laughs> okay, we're going to go straight in and open it up for questions. Just uh, be patient. We will bring a microphone to you. We'll start right here on the front row. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Uh, Drew, I just wanted to get your thoughts on what you've seen from Adama Sonogo from afar on film, uh, what kind of player he is, how difficult the challenge will be tomorrow. And it seems like similar game, you know, good footwork, good touch around the rim. And you, you see similarities between your games? Yeah, you know, he's a hell of a player. Um, easy All-American caliber player. Um, he uses his body really well. He's strong. He's aggressive. He gets a lot of his misses back, which I think is underrated part of his game. He presents a lot of challenges, and um, he's a smart player. So, I mean, it's he's going to be a handful for sure. Right here. Uh, Dave Bowling, spokesman of you. Uh, Drew, could you just in short uh, – Explain, uh, describe your relationship with Coach Few and how it's maybe evolved over the years. Uh, that's my guy. Um, you know, he's just, just been so good to me. Uh, we've had our ups and downs, and, you know, we've butted heads before, and I think that's the best part of it all is that we've been able to go at each other, push each other's buttons, and just, like, love each other too. And I think that's – while we've been so good together is we're not afraid to get under each other's skin and push each other to do better. It's like the perfect, like, brotherly love, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, you know, he's, he's the best coach I could ever ask for. I love that man. And you had to work through some rough times? Uh, I mean, rough is to someone's definition. <laughs> My version of rough is probably a little different than y'all's, but, you know, maybe some arguing every now and then. But, yeah, man, it's, it's been great. Loved it. Okay, Mark. Uh, Mark Anderson, AP. Um, Julian, what have the past few hours been like now? You've had time to process what happened last night. And looking ahead to tomorrow, your last college game in your hometown, what do you think the emotions are going to be like? Uh, I mean, yeah. It, it was kind of one of those things, kind of like a short memory. Because, um, I mean, in March, there's no time to dwell on the past and, and you know, try to try to live in that uh, moment too, too much. But, um. Yeah, I mean, tomorrow's already game day, so that's what we got our eyes set on. I mean, as soon as we got back to the hotel yesterday, uh, immediately hopped on some film on UConn and, and started prepping for this game tomorrow. So, um, yeah, it's just short memory, and, 
you know, um, I'm, I'm super excited for tomorrow and, 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 you know, what the biggest crowd will be like. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's the regional final. And, I mean, it's all you can ask for. Okay, right down front first. Connor Morris at Sports Illustrated Media Group. Julian, I know you just said short memory, but can you just take us through after hitting the shot? Did you connect with friends and family last night? What was last night like hitting that big shot in your hometown? And uh, just take us through what happened after the game. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, right there after after the after we celebrated on the court a little bit, I ran over to my uh, my dad and my two sisters and my nephew, gave them a big hug, you know talked to friends and family for a little bit and then, you know, came in here and celebrated with my team. You know, I mean, that, that was that was the main thing, you know, try to try to celebrate here as much as we can because as soon as we left the arena, it was all business. So you just celebrated here. Um, I, I mean, obviously just had moments talking to my to my dad and, and my sisters. I mean, it was, it was just a cool moment to share with them and I'm so glad that someone will never forget. Okay, right here. Uh, Julie, this is for Julian, and if someone else wanted to weigh in on it afterward, fine, but it's also good. But uh, Gonzaga's been deep in the tournament so many times, year after year, for a long period of time. Uh, how much have you guys talked about maybe being the group that makes that breakthrough and finally gets all the way over the top? Uh, I mean, before every season, I mean, that's obviously our ultimate goal, especially at Gonzaga. Um, that, I mean, that, that's all we got our eyes set on. Um, and yeah, we had our, we had some rough patches this year that you know may have uh, brought some dark times and, and a little bit of negative energy. But um, at, the, at the same time, we did an amazing job of just bouncing back and fighting through adversity. And I think that we've uh, hung our hats on that, our ability to fight fight through adversity and you know just having resilience throughout the season. So um, I mean, in March Madness, that, that's that's a great quality and great trait to have. And I mean, it's it's already showed up twice uh, in in our run so far and. You know, hopefully we can continue this run and, and, you know, be the first team to cut down the nets. Okay, let's get back here in the back. John Fanta from Fox Sports going to attempt to get Rasir, Nolan, or Anton involved with, with this question. You know, I, I hear Drew say uh, his relationship with, with Coach Few. I'm curious of two things from, from any of you guys, if something pops in your head. Number one, your first memorable encounter with Coach Few. It kind of tells a story uh, about who he is and what he's like. And then, two, how, how would you describe what makes him a great coach? Uh, yeah, I would just say I've been here since I was a freshman. So um, he he's going to let you hear it if you mess up. Um, you know, he might give you a little nickname. He gave me a couple nicknames, uh, drew a couple nicknames, and kind of got to laugh it off. But uh, – he, he just, he's a good mentor, and he gives us the right advice, and, you know, you got to respect him. Um, like Drew said, we bumped heads a little bit in the four years, but that's just how it is with, with your coach. And, um, you know, I'm just, just proud he's pushed me to become the player I am today. Do you want each of, each of you to answer that? Oh, a follow-up? Okay, real quick. Yes. Okay, uh, of the nicknames, I guess, can anyone share one <laughs> or two? Uh, he gave me the nickname Sleepy Floyd. I don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess sometimes I'll wake up, go to practice, and my hair will be to the side or something. And, you know, not, yeah, he gave me that nickname. Uh, my nickname was Dumbass for a while <laughs> my freshman year. <laughs> Pr pretty fitting. Okay, down front. Uh, Travis Green, Crim 2 News in Spokane. Raj, I, I hope I'm not putting you on blast too much here, but I was talking to your dad yesterday, and he was telling us about just, like, the passion that you've always had for sports. And when you were a kid, you would sleep with – before, I think it was a football game. You had your helmet and pads. You slept with your pads. Uh, <laughs> is this something that, you know, this, a stage like this, do you have any superstitions or something so big heading into big games like this? Uh, nah, that was, uh, that was a big football game for eight-year-old me, and, uh, I just had my helmet on all night, so, uh, yeah, but, uh, really no superstitions, uh, just take a nap, uh, listen to some music, and then go out there and play, no, no real superstitions now. Okay, back here in the middle. Uh, Austin Montgomery, mid-major madness, Andre Jackson, uh, this is for Anton, um, Andre Jackson, guy who, who has a huge impact on the game, but doesn't necessarily show up on the box score. How do you limit his impact um, on the game tomorrow? Um, it's going to be tough to do that. Um, he does a little bit of everything. Uh, 
once he gets a rebound, he pushes it up the court super fast. So, you know, he's just a player that kind of does what I try to do and what I do. And, you know, it's going to be tough to stop him, but uh, we're going to have to figure out, watch, watch some film on him and um, figure out ways to stop him. But, you know, he does a little bit of everything. Okay, right here in the middle. Uh, Joe Ruda, Hartford Current. Uh, Nolan, I'm just wondering, similar question to the last one, but Jordan Hawkins, you know, what, do you, what do you see in him and the way that he moves without the, or off the ball, and how difficult is he going to be to keep up with? No, it's going to be a, a hassle for sure. Um, the way he moves without the ball is amazing. It's, it's definitely pro-like. Um, so I just feel like, you know, just being attached, being on his hip the whole game, and just being tough. Uh, being there on the shot is going to, you know, make the tough shots, uh, tough shots, you know, harder for him, I feel like. So, you know, yeah. Question over here. Uh, Gavin Keith for the London Day for Julian. In, in games like this, you have two very good teams playing. What, what what's some of the intangibles that can make a difference in a game like this? Oh, I had a, I had a similar conversation uh, earlier today. I mean, it's one of those things where, I mean, you could – you could worry about all the X and O's and, and you know, remembering all their sets or them remembering ours. But at the end of the day, you know, you just got to roll out the ball and play. I mean, it's going to come down to who, who gets the big offensive rebound, who forces a turnover, um, and who, who really wants it more. I mean, that's really what it comes down to in March when you got two, two heavyweight teams going at it and, you know, fighting to get to the Final Four. I mean, this is what it's all about. And it's, it's really going to come down to those type of plays, offensive rebounds and, and, and things like that. OK, we're going to take a question on Zoom from Brenna Green. Go ahead. Uh, this one's for Tom and Drew. Um, Brenna Green, point six. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I guess outside similarities to this game from uh, the Baylor game in 2021. Just how do you, what did you guys learn from that game after a, a big shot like this one? And, you know, how are you going to apply it going into this game to avoid a letdown? Yeah, I would just say kind of what um, Julian said, um, just short memory. Um, we celebrated in the locker room. And once we got left the locker room, got back to the hotel, we got straight to film, started locking in on UConn. And you know, I think we just changed our approach and our mindset. So hopefully we'll be a little bit more prepared for the game tomorrow and um, you know, ready for that. Any other questions for the student athletes? Guys, thank you, and good luck to you tomorrow. Thank Coach. Okay, we're joined in the interview room now by Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. Coach, want to make an opening statement about uh, preparations for tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, everybody's fired up and excited to still be playing in the, in the greatest sporting event in the world. So, uh, uh, but it's, it was a short night, and, and uh, UConn uh, uh, presents a lot of problems. I mean, I, talking to people, I think we all feel like they're playing as good as any team uh, in this tournament right now. And so, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we got to get over uh, and cover today, and then hopefully in a walk through tomorrow and, and get ready. We know it's going to be a real physical game. Uh, their transition offense is every bit as good as ours. Uh, and then they just have the ability to score inside and outside. And, uh, and then their defense has uh, <clears throat> been top notch through this tourney. The most excellent yesterday. Okay, we're going to start with questions back here on the right. Mark, John Fanta, Fox Sports. Uh, we just got done talking with, with your guys. And uh, I, I asked if, if they had any interesting, memorable story of, of their first encounter with you. Um, Great. They jumped into <laughs> nicknames, and Drew said that his nickname as a freshman was Dumbass. Uh, 
I'm just kidding. <laughs> you have a problem with that? No, <laughs> I think it's I think it's incredible. I think it's outstanding. Uh, can you? He's changed now. He's, can you elaborate? He's the, he's the union rep now. That's his nickname now. So he's that's been the, he's been the union rep the last two years. He's always on me about length of practice, length of film sessions, um, you know, days off. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. So I guess that's, he's moved up some, right? I just want to make a quick announcement. The breakout rooms for the players will be open at 3.15. So it's uh, 3.02 now. So we have a little bit of time. Ed, go ahead. And I did, uh, just, uh, and, and I heard Anton, I was in another room, and he had Sleepy Floyd. Sleepy Floyd was, that was just because Anton played like he was asleep his first two years. No emotion, no. And so... I just threw out Sleepy Floyd. They, those guys have no idea how good a player Sleepy Floyd was back in the day. I, I think it's a cartoon character or something. Um, Ed Graney, Review Journal. Mark, uh, coming out of Liberty, what were the intangibles most about Julian that you saw, and now the development under you, what do you see in terms of the player that he was? You know, just uh, uh, what you saw last night, I mean, I, and his ability to score. I mean, if you, I don't know if you covered him or watched him at all back in the high school days, but uh, I mean, prolific scorer. I, th I remember one of the games I was down recruiting at, he had at least 40 in, and he just scored it really, really easy. Um, and we were looking for a, a big wing, you know, like a, a Kispert type wing that could shoot and score at that time, and he, he fit the bill perfectly. Okay, another question in the back. Jim Allen, Spokesman Review, Spokane. Uh, Coach, I know it's been 24 years, but can you talk about what that last, uh, that Elite Eight appearance uh, against UConn meant to the program and to you personally? Oh, it was a long, I don't know, what, it was 24, 25 years ago. Uh, I mean, it was just obviously just a magical whirlwind run. I mean, it, uh, we, the school had never even won a game in the NCAA tournament, let alone. Uh, uh, three of them, and so it was just such a magical ride. We had, we'd never done press conferences. We'd never had police escorts. We'd never had anything. I mean, we'd very rarely even been on national television, but maybe once or twice on ESPN or something. So, uh, uh, I mean, it's arguably it's. It, I mean, it, not arguably, it is the start of the entire run. Uh, uh, you know, and the, everybody knows the story. Enrollments went from. 2,500 now to over 8,000, and there's all kinds of new buildings and new arenas, and, and uh, um, it's just been a great, great story to be a part of. Okay, right here. Uh, Dom Amore from the Hartford Current. Uh, Coach, you mentioned that run 24 years ago, and, you, and you've taken so many teams deep into the tournament since then. What's unique about this group, and what gives you optimism that maybe this is the group that can, can go all the way? Uh, I mean, well, I never would have thought that if you would have checked with me in November, in early December, but uh, I think that's probably their resiliency and their ability to just figure out how to win. I mean, we've been in some some pretty dire situations this year and, and, and just done a great job of sticking with it and just finding a way, and it's been different, uh, you know, each and every night. But... Uh, kind of that ability right there. It's not maybe what some of our great teams have done in the past. I mean, we've had number one ranked defenses and, and uh, you know, great size and, and you know, just unbelievable uh, skill and speed, uh, you know, on the offensive end when you think back to that 21 team. But uh, these guys just have this, this kind of winning DNA and just figure out what it takes to win. You know, even sometimes when the analytics don't really back it up at the end of the game, so. Okay, back here in the center. Awesome Montgomery mid-major madness. Coach, back in November, you guys pay, played a stretch where you had to play uh, three of the best bigs in the country, Shibwe, Edie, Nunji. They each gave you guys trouble in their own way. Sonogo for UConn is part of that elite caliber. Um, what, kind, what can you do defensively to stop them, whether it's uh, limiting post touch, touches, pressuring guards, denying them? What's your strategy to kind of stop I mean, them? All, all of the above, right? I mean, there's kind of no secret. You can, you got to, you got to do whatever you can. You got to play to your strengths. Um, 
obviously he's a he's a load down there and a physical presence. They do a great job of getting him the ball from different areas and different spots and whether the a lot of the feeds are from the middle of the floor and then they're mixed up with wing touches and, and uh they run actions before he rolls down in there. Um but yeah, and then on top of that he's just a, a, a big time uh, offensive rebounder. So uh he's one of the the big issues that we got to get solved here. OK, down front. Uh, Dave Bowling, Spokesman Review. Uh, we always ask players what they learn from the coaches. Um, what, as a coach, have you learned from Drew? Anything, you know? Uh, no, I've just learned that, uh, and, and just I've always came to respect just how he, how he always comes to practice with a, in a great mood. Uh, and kind of raises the level of, of of everybody. You know, his is usually with humor. You know, not really raw raw guy, but uh, uh, takes the edge maybe off the moments or you know, when you're in those tough, you know, coming back from a tough loss or a tough game or whatever. Drew Drew can always drop it down a couple notches and and uh, maybe make it feel like it's not life or death. Uh, he's got a great gift with that. And then I think. Because he's like that, I think people grossly underestimate just the ferocious competitor that he is. I mean, he's just, again, I, I, I think uh, I've been doing this at least as an assistant or head coach 35 years. And, and uh, uh, I mean, I, I just think he's one of the all-time greats in the modern era in college basketball. I don't think enough people are saying that. I mean, he's, the wins he's been a part of, the the – scoring and what he's been able to do um, and and w we took off a whole tournament in 2020 when we were the number one seed and Spokane was hosting the first and second round so I really liked our chances of, that he would have even more games into this thing and who knows he might even have a national championship that year so um, he just delivers he delivers and and you know, games we need him and nobody hears about maybe during our league time where we're really struggling. And then he he delivers night in and night out in the biggest moments on the biggest stage in the NCAA tournament. OK, back here in the back. Uh, Mark, uh, John Fanta, Fox Sports, kind of sticking with that because we hear all these stories about the competitor, the, the personality. Take us back to Richardson, Texas, Pierce High School, his roots. What made you fall in love with him back then? Watching his, uh, watching him on the AAU circuit, uh, he was on a very, you know, com competitive uh, AAU team, uh, and played with some just phenomenal athletes coming out of Texas. And yet here was this, you know, wasn't maybe ath as athletically gifted guy, but he had this confidence and this brashness about him. He would take the ball off the defensive boards and lead the break and go behind his back and make a great pass that you'd see a point guard make to somebody or he'd do what he was doing last night, kind of go coast to coast and inside out a guy and lay it in. And I mean, he just, he showed all those skills that we like kind of our bigs to have, but he always had this, uh, you know, swag about him really, it's swag. And, and that swag, even his freshman year became contagious uh, within our team. And I think with a team like this one, we have this year, I mean, what that does is it it uh, maybe instills a belief in some of the other players that they don't necessarily have deep in their core that he has. I mean, he, he thinks he's going to win every time he walks out there. Okay, right here in the front. Uh, Theo Lawson with the Spokesman Review. What do you make of uh, UConn's backcourt, especially uh, Jordan Hawkins, 24 points? Does he compare to anyone you've seen th through kind of your uh, tough non-conference schedule? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, just the way, I mean, he's, I think he's the, the best bright jump shooter in college basketball, especially what he's able to do with off ball screens and pin downs and flares and actions like that. And he's able to make, he's got that gift. Um, Adam Morrison had that for us back in the day, hitting closely guarded shots. You can be there in his space and have a hand up and he's still uh, able to hit those. Uh, and they run some really, really good actions for him. They screen for him very well. And, and uh, you know, he's 
he's so dangerous. He's had, I think, multiple 20-point halves, halves, and uh, so he's definitely at the top of our list. Yeah, right here in front. No, no, right here, and then we'll get back there. Uh, Joe Ruta, Hartford Current. Coach, uh, just curious, do you have a relationship with Dan Hurley at all? And if not, what have you heard about him? I, 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 no, I, don't, I haven't spent much time with Dan. I, we were recruiting uh, down at, uh, I believe it was at Montverde or one of those uh, prep schools in Florida and got, got to spend a little bit of time with him and enjoyed talking shop with him back in the day, but that's about it. Hey, back here. Yeah, Coach, uh, Kevin Sweeney from Sports Illustrated. I know you talked a lot about Drew, but I'm curious. Like you said, you saw the swag in high school and, and even early at Gonzaga, but like, how do, you, how do you evaluate that a kid will be that competitive, that tough, that will raise the level in practice? Like, How do you see that when you're trying to find a kid? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if you necessarily knew that, but I mean, the skill package was there, the confidence was there. You could see how he competed in those games, that he wasn't afraid. And, uh, you know, you get, you get multiple looks at – and a guy and get to know him and, and uh, you know, you could tell he loved to compete and he enjoyed that and uh, and had a lot of self-confidence. So that, that always works in our program. Okay, Adam. Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, I'm sure you've seen Drew defended a million different ways and you talked about what Sonogo brings offensively. Um, what kind of challenges do you present maybe on the defensive end of the floor? Uh, I mean, again, he's a big body, and he's a, uh, uh, you know, he is a good rim protector, and he moves his feet really, really well for someone his size. So I think probably those three attributes that are what make him a good, and it's not just, it won't be just against Drew. He does a good job with his ball screen coverages. He gets out and moves his feet and hits his coverages really, really well. Okay, in the very, very back here. Hi, Mark Wayne Norman, UConn Sports Network. What team on your schedule most resembles what UConn provides as far as the offensive strength, the perimeter threats, and also the defense? Uh, somebody asked me that earlier. Um, I mean, you know, the closest thing probably was uh, uh, maybe Purdue, just because Purdue had Edie inside. The guards could really, really shoot. Uh, the forwards were tough. Uh, the, the, the defense was tough and physical and, and, you know, didn't miss a lot of assignments. And that was probably the one that stood out the most. Uh, you know, obviously uh, the pace that we, Alabama played with when we played uh, would be probably most similar with how they go up and down. Okay, we're going to go back here in the back. Hey, Scott Miller, New York Times. Uh, Mark, with Malachi Smith, um, when you saw last spring that he was in the transfer portal, did your eyes light up? What kind of reaction did you have? And then secondly, when he came to you, uh, building the relationship with a new guy like that, especially a guy that's willing to come off the bench after being right. the player, Southern Conference Player of the Year, what was that like? Uh, I, I usually let the staff kind of sift through all the portal stuff before I get too fired up. <laughs> and uh, um, so uh, I think they brought it to me and then I, you know, watched some film on him. And obviously once we started watching film, liked more and more what we saw. But to be honest with you, what really swung me was when we met him and talked to him and then met him in person and met his, uh, his mom's got an incredibly impressive uh, story. And, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, I think he was up here at some point. I mean, he's he's a very energetic, um, charismatic guy who's a big time team guy, and and our team really needs that energy. Um, and we got some pretty stoic, uh, low emotion guys, and so we needed uh, Malachi just for that sp spirit that he has. He's got a real positive spirit about him walks around, I mean, he's constantly a smile on his face, and he's definitely an uplifter. And uh, we needed that, and and the other thing he has, he's got that confidence also. He's not afraid of the moment. I think that's born out of his experiences at Chattanooga where he was the man and needed to score and could even process missing. Uh, and so he, he might have a particularly kind of 
average half in the first half, but I, I, I have a lot of confidence in him that he'll be he'll hit a big shot in the second half. You know, he's, he doesn't dwell on it. Just a quick announcement: the breakout rooms are now open. They'll be open until three thirty. Question over here on the side. Hey, Mark, uh, Brendan Quinn with the Athletic. Um, Andre Jackson's obviously, you know, a hyper unique player. Mm -hmm. um, when it's when you're going through the scout and you're kind of watching how Danny uses him in so many different ways and, and actions and all this stuff, this kind of coach watching coach, what jumps out to you about how, how Danny kind of utilizes the guy? Uh, I mean, just how active and, and how impactful he is. He's incredibly impactful on both ends of the floor, and he's really impactful in transition. Um, and, and, you know, he's scary when he's up on top of their three-quarter court press or even on top of their zone. And he's also, I mean, he's a very dangerous cutter, which I think is kind of a lost art. And, uh, you know, seems to, he just seems to have his hand in a lot of uh, different things for them. So you can tell just how important he is to them. And, and obviously defensively, I mean, you can tell that if they have somebody they want to shut down, they put him on him. Anything else for Coach? Coach, thank you, and good luck tomorrow. Yep, you got it. See you tomorrow. All right. Hey, you got out 10 minutes early. <laughs> Sorry. UConn will be due in here at 340. Cons? Uh, I'll have to look at the schedule. I'm not sure. Locker room will open at 3:40. Um, if he comes in with the players, yes. If he decides not to come in with the players, then we can move him. If he comes in later, we'll move him down like we did uh, Mark. So you got the five.
We will be bringing a starting five from UConn as well as head coach Dan Hurley in. Just as a reminder, the student athletes will be here for the first 20 minutes. At that time, the breakout rooms will open at 4.05 and be open to 4.20. The breakout rooms are back down the hallway where the locker rooms are. So again, try to direct as many questions early on to the student athletes if, uh, if coach comes in with them. Thank you. You guys need some water? Uh, yes. Oh. Uh, Andy, Andy, can you guys get some cups of water for the players? Yeah. Oh, we got some coming. I told them to bring some. Okay, we're joined today by our UConn student athletes, Tristan Newton, Alex Caravan, Adama Sanogo, Jordan Hawkins, and Andre Jackson, Jr. And we will open things up for questions to our student athletes. Please raise your hand, and we will bring a microphone to you. We'll start right down front here. This is for Adama Gavin Key from the New London Day. Adama, what are your thoughts on Drew Timmy and playing against him and what you've seen him, on him on tape? Uh, watching his game, I know he's, like, he's one of the best players in the country, you know. And uh, we know like he's well coached and you know like uh, he's a good player. So I think it's gonna be a good matchup for us, you know. The, uh, this is a team that are well coached, they have a good coach. So uh, I can't I can't wait, you know. I'm definitely like looking forward and I think it'll be a fun game tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, John, back here. Hey, guys. John Fanta from Fox Sports. Uh, this question is for I'll, I'll zone in on Andre and Jordan here. Uh, last night, Adama talked about this team coming together after January um, and that you guys had a meeting. And the way the meeting started wasn't the way the meeting ended. What do you recall about what happened in that conversation between you guys that has led you to the run you've gone on now? Really, that meeting was just a, a talk amongst us about stuff we had to do and hold each other to a higher, higher standard, uh, the UConn standard. And then really just, uh, it was just about taking an everyday approach to just getting better as a team. And we all did that and we, and we made that true. And we all been doing a pretty good job of just making sure we're all on the right page, all on the same page. Um, yeah, I follow up to what he said. I mean, we just had the man to man conversation. So like we just had to be real with ourselves. Like we just know we didn't want to be in the same position that we were last year. So we had to look ourselves in the mirror and take that big leap that uh that we had to take. So any other questions? Oh, another one for John next. Guess I'll I I'm gonna focus on you here, Alex. Um as a fellow front core player. What have you learned from the guy to your right? Do you have any any story that comes to the top of your brain about Adama Sanogo? <laughs> um, I mean, I've learned a lot from him. I mean, just seeing him off the court, just how he is as a person, how he carries himself. And then on the court, his work ethic. I mean, he's one of the hardest working players on this team. So it's really driven me to work hard, too. And um, he makes my life so much easier on the basketball court. We communicate with each other a lot. Um, he controls the inside and the paint so much to where it helps me out uh, on the perimeter as well. So um, he's a great teammate. Um, some stories, I mean, <laughs> you know, he blames me a lot of stuff. He calls me the freshman a lot of times. He blames me all the time. So um, I mean, he's a great teammate, and um, I love him. Okay, back here. 
Uh, Brendan Quinn with The Athletic. Uh, Andre, what do you think Dan was like as a player? Probably really gritty. He was probably really gritty, played a lot of defense. I, I, when he told me, though, he said that he was more of like a playmaker, had a lot of different skills, good skill set. So I've watched some of his highlights at Senior Hall and stuff on YouTube. So I'm definitely a fan. Uh, right here in the middle. Uh, you know, this this one can be for Andre. Um, please, please uh, oh, sorry, yeah, Kev, Kevin Sweeney for Sports Illustrated. Um, Andre, I'm curious. I talked to to Joey C uh, the other day. He said that sometimes he watched highlights of the Alabama game and some of the stuff in Portland to kind of remind him how good you guys could be when you share the ball that way. Did you ever do stuff like that, like just to try to remind yourself of how good this team was early in the season when you guys were struggling? Yeah, definitely. I think I always do that. I'm always constantly watching our team. I just like to watch us play because the way we play is very selfless. We all touch the ball. We all move in the ball. So uh, every time there's a game, I always watch the game. And then I watch like the breakdowns of the game as well. So every game, I think I, I just tune in and, and try to watch and see just the way we play and how we could get better. Uh, Adam down front, you can bring the microphone down front. Uh, Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. Uh, for Tristan, obviously defense is a, is a team game, a team concept, but how much faith do you guys have as a team in what Adama can do uh, against Timmy tomorrow? Uh, I feel like he'll do a great job. He's been doing a great job all year against whoever he's played, so we have great faith that he can guard whoever uh, we put him on. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anything else? Okay, we have John back here again. Tristan, earlier this season you talked about um, the UConn standard and how much it, it means to you to be a Connecticut point guard. What can you say about the opportunity at hand tomorrow as a Connecticut point guard to write a chapter on an Elite Eight game? I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a big honor to be in the spot that we are. But like I said, I'm not focused on like myself, to be honest. I'm just trying to do whatever I could do to help the team win. So, uh, yeah, it is a big honor, but it's not just me as a point guard, it's everybody else. Okay, any, any, uh, one back, Jesse back here in the back. Uh, Andre, obviously we all know uh, the Jesse, attention. Jesse, identify Sorry, yourself. Jesse Merrick, uh, Channel 3 Las Vegas out here. Uh, Andre, we all know the attention that Drew Timmy obviously commands. Uh, outside of him, though, what are the other things that stand out about this Gonzaga team that make them so tough to play against? I mean, they're the best offense in the country, and uh, they're very efficient. They have a lot of different guys, a lot of different weapons. Uh, definitely Drew Timmy has been a really good player every year he's been in college. So we know what he brings to the table. And, and around him, he has a lot of people that can shoot the ball. Uh, some good role players. Uh, at the four, they got number 22. He's pretty good uh, role player. So they got a lot of guys that fit around his style of play. So they are a good offensive team, but we're a really good defensive team as well. So really just going to go out there and try to disrupt their, the rhythm of their offense and really just stick to our script and what we do. Going down front here. This is for Alex Gavin Key from the London Day. You guys have been pretty loose as a team so far, and obviously tomorrow a trip to the Final Four is on the line. Can you continue to stay loose going into this big game? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, we're coming off a lot of momentum right now. We just had a great win yesterday and um, a bunch of great wins throughout the entire season, so we want to keep building on it. I know we're excited to reach the Final Four. We want to reach the Final Four. That's been a goal of ours since the beginning of the season, so um, we just want to get, get out there and start playing. Anything else? Thank you guys very much. Good luck tomorrow. The uh, breakout rooms will open at 4.05. They got them out. Right? Yeah. Okay, we're good. We're
Thank you, Coach. Doing well. That's a, that's a fresh cup if you're thirsty there. Okay, we're joined by UConn head coach Dan Hurley. Coach, you want to make an opening statement just about your preparation and tomorrow night's game? Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, really excited um, you know, for the opportunity to you know, play, uh, you know, play a game and go to the Final Four versus, uh, you know, I think it becomes you know, obviously uh, you know, even, even, even more exciting because of the, you know, the quality of the opponent. I just think a, a, a UConn-Gonzaga game, you know, West Region, you know, final is uh, just an exciting game to be a part of. So uh, we obviously know their quality, one of the best teams in the country, um, and have been one of the best teams in the country, uh, you know, for, for recent, uh, you know, recent memory. So excited about the game. Obviously, you know, it's a great challenge. Let's start right here in front. Dan, Mike Anthony from Hearst. Uh, knowing that you're coaching one of the biggest games of your life tomorrow, what is today like for you? You think you'll get any sleep tonight? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, it's an important game. I just, you know, I, I've, I've coached a lot of games. You know, I, I, I don't think, um, yeah, I don't know, unless somebody's got like an injury, or again, if, or somebody drops on me that Adama's not going to be eating. You know, otherwise, you know, you put the preparation in. You know, you, you know your identity as a team. I mean, obviously, you've got a, a short prep to get ready for, you know, your opponent. But, like, I, I think at this time of the year, I think for most teams, everything's pretty automatic. You just try to get your team in the best frame of mind, um, you know, mentally and keep them fresh and, you know, go try to g give your best performance. Um, but stressing and turning, tossing and turning, that won't be me tonight. I'll sleep like a baby. Okay, right here in front. Uh, Adam Betts with the Journal Inquirer. Coach, what are your thoughts on Coach Few and what he's done with the Gonzaga program and turned it into a mid-major into a national power? Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, you know, they hit the mark across the board. Um, you know, player development, uh, the culture, the winning, you know, um, you know Final Fours, obviously – Putting guys in the NBA, you know they've, uh, you know they do it with a with a culture that's widely respected. So, um, you know, share the sideline with 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 um, you know some coaches more than others. You you know have uh, you know greater respect for what they've been able to do in the career and how they've done it. Obviously, Mark's you know one of those guys you have a lot of respect for. Good hey, John. Dan, John Fanta from Fox Sports. Uh, last night, uh, Adama Sanogo talked after the game and. And he told me that he'll talk to himself in the mirror tomorrow morning about who he needs to be and you can do this, Adama. Mm. Who is Adama the person and what made you fall in love with him in the first place? Yeah, um, Adama the person is uh, you know, just that, that, that rare, um, you know, rare individual in terms of the intangible qualities. Uh, you know, obviously, he's got you know, tremendous physical strength and touch and athletic abilities, but he's got a tremendous makeup, his work ethic uh, off the charts, his competitive will off the charts. Um, you know, he just, uh, you know, he just, he's got tremendous working character and uh, just the guy's a warrior and, um, you know, and, and he's a guy that, that values winning more than anything else. Okay, Ed. Ed Green, the Review Journal coach. Is it your leadership that kind of allows you to perform as you did yesterday on this team, despite everything that's happened, whether it's the bus, whether it's the hotel? I mean, you must have, <laughs> you must have leaders, you know, that kind of can compartmentalize, and then when it's time to go, go. Yeah, you know, it hasn't been – it really hasn't been that bad. I, 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 Luke said that his phone went off. There was a story about, you know, the bus being vandalized. You know, it, it hasn't been that bad. You know, we've had some minor inconveniences um, that – what I've been thinking about because we're so joyful about being in Vegas and playing, you know, have an opportunity to go to the Final Four. So, um, but we have a mature team in terms of Adama and Andre's leadership. And, um, you know, and they're battle tested because of the Big East, man. When you, when you play in the Big East and uh, especially the top of our league, the top of our league was as good as any, uh, or, or I think is the best of any league in the country this year. So the Big East toughens you up when you have 
some minor inconveniences. Okay, Adam. Uh, Adam Hill, Las Vegas Review Journal. You just mentioned Adama and what, what he's meant to the team. What do you expect from him, I guess, specifically uh, defensively uh, against Timmy? And is that the kind of challenge you expect him to embrace? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, with, with, with Drew Timmy, you're talking about, um, you know, one of the, one of the best big guys, you know, to ever play college basketball. So it's obviously uh, a tremendous challenge, you know, for him and Donovan and for our entire team. Um, you, know, you can't, you know, you, you, you've got to have help and he's, you've got to see some bodies. You can't just leave him, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he's got to see some crowds, even though that's not really what we do. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's he knows the challenge. The team knows the challenge. You know, Drew Timmy is one of the one of the best bigs to to play college basketball. Okay, in the back corner. Hi, Dan Wayne Norman, UConn Sports Network. It's well documented that your bench has really been productive during this current run. But one guy I'd like you to talk about is Naheem Aline. His points are up. His production is up. He's been scoring for you. He's eight of his last 15 three pointers. What he means to your team and the production off the bench. Yeah, when we when we're you know, extremely formidable, the the bench is, is played a big part in that. You know, obviously, um, you know, going into the season uh, or at the end of last season, understanding that we needed to improve our perimeter attack and and bring in veterans to supplement uh, that core of Jordan, Andre, and Adama, and Donovan and Alex, that that core. Um, yeah, but Naheem has got NCAA experience. Uh, he's been successful in the tournament. That was a big, um, you know, big reason why we were attracted to him because of how well he played in that first round game against Florida when he played at Virginia Tech. Um, you know, because we knew we needed, uh, you know, have players that had the mental makeup to step up uh, in, in stressful situations. Right down front. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Dan, uh, you with, with Adama and, and Timmy and, and Donovan as well, three of the better big men really in the country tomorrow. Do you think it's, a, it's been a good thing to see the rise, sort of the rise, the return of the big man in college, I mean, the Big East certainly, but all around the country. Uh, it's been a good development for uh, just to see so many good centers this year? Yeah, I think so. I think it, it, makes, uh, I think it makes the game more interest, interesting in terms of you know, the tactics. Um, you can watch an NBA game like, and, and literally never see anything besides like a million threes and then and then dunks right and uh you know the kind of the back to the basket throwing the ball in the post you know i just think there's a, a you know college basketball you're it's a lot more diversified and obviously these big back to the basket type of centers that can you know, do damage in the paint you know the nba is not you know not necessarily calling for them right they want guys that can make threes and and play in space so uh you know, it, it certainly uh, it's to the benefit of a college game because you get so many outstanding players that now are staying in college. Okay, back here. John Titel from Hoops HD. Uh, you're not the only UConn basketball team playing this weekend. How close are the men's and women's teams? And can you even comprehend the idea of a coach who's been to 22 Final Fours? That's how many, Gino? That's so many, is it 30 straight Sweet 16 or 29 straight? Yeah, yeah, who's it's just stopped counting in the high 20s, right? <laughs> um, no, I mean, you can't fathom that, not, um, no. And then, um, and, and, and it's really close. I think uh, just the, the players between both programs and the coaching staffs are, are, are very closely connected and, and very supportive, and we share a practice facility, and I think we're each other's biggest fans, and... Um, you know, I, th I think it's a really cool thing that, that this March we're holding up our end of it. Okay, in front. Dan, Gavin, Keith from the Northern Day. What kind of challenges does Gonzaga present for, for your defense? Obviously, one of the highest scoring teams with the highest scoring in the nation. Yeah, number one offense in the country. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's a tre tremendous challenge because they stress, they sh the, the, first of all, the pace that they come at you with. Um, in terms of how quickly they get the ball reversed from side to side, how quickly they get the ball down the court on makes misses. Um, your ball screen defense is stressed. Your low post defense is stressed. Um, you know, they've got all types of shooting on the perimeter. Um, you know, versatility. Um, you know, they got great depth at guard. Um, so, you know, they, they, it, our defense will, will face its, its, its greatest challenge. And, 
you know, they play in a similar way to, to Xavier, um, you know, which I don't know how good a news that is for us because we didn't, you know, we had trouble guarding them, but we did. Uh, they play a very, very similar offensive style to something that we've, we were able to see twice during the course of the year in terms of the, their spacing and how they attack you. Over here. Sam Gordon, Las Vegas Review Journal. Dan, for you, what is the most fulfilling component or part of being a basketball coach? Uh, yeah, I mean, easy, just the, the, the relationships. Uh, you're just everyone that's, that you're on the mission with, you know, the, the, the players, the coaching staff, uh, you know, get, getting to know Andre Jackson, you know, as a, as a, and his family, his mom, Trish, and uh, his brother, Marcus, as, a, as like a 15, 16 year old. Um, you know, convincing him to believe in you, that you're the person to help him holistically develop into a, a great man and a great player. And, you know, let's go and chase a Final Four together. And then when it comes to fruition and uh, all that time you've spent together, you know, like we spend 11 months a year together. You know, every day that these guys are on campus, our program runs summer one, summer two. They're not optional programs. Like every day that these guys are on campus, we are on and we are together every day. So, um, you know, you, you truly are, you know, your family. I mean, and uh, to do this together is special, not just the great moments, but having to pick each other up after great failures. I mean, just doing it all together, the roller coaster ride, man, it's like, uh, it's a bond that you have with other people that most people don't get to experience. Right over here. Uh, Dom Amore, Hartford Current. Dan, uh, when you look at the teams that are still playing, obviously three from the Big East, America and Mountain West, et cetera, only a couple of Power Five schools, what, do, what does that say to you about college basketball and you know, maybe the, the teams that would seem to have the most resources Aren't, don't necessarily have an advantage over schools and conferences that prioritize basketball. Yeah. Um, well, obviously NIL has, you know, has has affected you know where the you know talent formerly was attracted to big brand programs, right? Like the I don't want to name them, <laughs> you know, but the biggest brands with the most national championships and the most NBA players, you know, that was kind of. Uh, you know, that, that was the huge advantage that you don't really have in recruiting anymore with NIL, um, with the transfer portal. Uh, obviously, the, that, the extra year COVID players, the, the inventory of players that are available um, for programs across the board to strengthen their team, like that extra year, the inventory is greater. Uh, so that levels the playing field as well. But... Um, yeah, I just think it's the convergence of, of those things. I do not think, um, you know, that, that it's going to change. I think this is probably just the, the new normal. And, um, you know, you can't rest on your laurels as a, as a university or, or as a basketball program because you have a rich history or tradition, um, you know, that this game has changed. Anything else for Coach? Coach, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow night. Yes, thank you, guys. See you. Just a quick announcement, Hammond Communications will be posting recordings of the press conferences in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com, and we will have transcripts provided by ASAP shortly. Thank you very much for being here. We will see you tomorrow night.